Hello and welcome to the Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up network load balancing for your service fabric cluster. So what we have here is uh, our application that we deployed in a prior video, and I have it currently deployed on all five nodes in my cluster. And a particular scenario that I want to show you is what happens when you actually try to um, access your application and since you're accessing it directly to a particular uh, service fabric node, if that node actually gets restarted, you're basically your application is inaccessible because that service fabric isn't accessible at that time. Maybe it's getting patched, maybe there's uh, other services that are being uh, modified on it and it begins to have a problem. So what I have right here is our sample application. You can see on the bottom uh, the name of the node right here. So if I start refreshing, what we're uh, what we're using here is the application service gateway or application gateway and service inside of service fabric. And you can see it actually keeps refreshing going from three to two to four, basically a low balancing between our nodes. Now, if you notice inside of the URL itself, we're actually referencing a specific service fabric node. Well, that's not very nice because if that uh, service fabric node goes down, basically your application becomes unavailable. So let's test that real quick. So right now I'm pointing to service fabric node one, which is right here. And if I actually locate it right here and let's just uh, restart that node. And you'll notice that uh, now that when I try to actually access that node, it's going to actually uh, start having a problem because that service fabric instance is no longer available. Um, luckily, it actually came back up pretty quickly, so everything is good to go again. But uh, for that duration, when it is having a problem where it's not available yet, then your users will basically not be able to access the application, which is not very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up what's called network load balancing. Um, and that is a feature of Windows. So let's uh, take a look at how to do that real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up PowerShell. Actually, I'm going to open up by uh, using Administrator. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually uh, validate that a particular uh, cluster uh, DNS record doesn't actually exist because we're going to want to actually set up a a DNS record specifically for this uh, cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and just call it dev sf instead of uh, the nodes uh, names that I have right now are dev sf 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I just want to have uh, a more generic name that's called dev sf. So let's actually look it up. And as you can see, uh, nothing could actually be found inside of my domain. So uh, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is actually log into my domain controller um, and go ahead and create a record there. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a DNS record. So let me take a look real quick at how to do that. There's actually a command for this. And you can just run add DNS service uh, server resource record. And then here, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to specify the name. And uh, the name is going to be devsf. The name is going to be home.local. The address is going to be 192.168.1.230 as just a record that I already validated that doesn't exist. And I'm going to go ahead and specify the time to live. And this is uh, basically how long the record is going to uh, live uh, before it needs to be uh, refreshed by the client. So, so now uh, the record is created and I should be able to verify it. Let me go back to my uh, prompt here and I'll just do a NSLOOKUP command like I did before. And you can see that the record shows up now. So the next step I'm going to do is actually uh, install a couple of tools. Uh, one is going to be a management tool on this machine here that I'm going to be managing from, as well as uh, installation of the actual NLB service on all of the nodes in my cluster in Service Fabric. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm going to check is uh, to see if a Windows feature exists. And uh, the feature is called Network Load Balancing. Um, I don't actually need to install it on this machine, so I'm going to just uh, focus on installing this uh, this feature right here. And what this is going to do is uh, actually if we go to my uh, start menu, if I look for network load, um, you don't actually see anything. So just to show you, I don't have it installed. So I'm going to go ahead and then um, just run this command. Make sure you're running as an administrator, otherwise it will not allow you to actually install it. Okay, so you can see it uh, got installed. So now if I go to uh, and type in network load balancing in my start menu, I can actually bring up this uh, management feature. Now I actually need to be able to manage the nodes. So let's go ahead and actually install the uh, load balancing feature inside of our nodes. So And the name of that feature is NLB. So And uh, also I, I don't actually want to have to log in into each individual node to perform this operation. You can actually do it with a GUI but it's so much easier to do it with PowerShell. And the way to do it, um, you obviously you have to have administrator uh, permissions to be able to install features, but then you can just invoke command. And then you specify uh, the nodes that you want to install it on. Zero, devsf1, devsf2, three, and then four. So um, basically, I'm just specifying all the nodes that I want to run a particular command on. So, and then I'm going to do uh, install Windows feature and then give it NLB as the feature. So, and let's go ahead and actually run that. And let's give it a moment. Uh, once it installs, uh, we can go ahead and actually configure the rest of the functionality uh, for our cluster to work correctly. Okay, so as you can see, it was actually pretty quick. Um, so now what I should be able to do is I'll go ahead and open up my uh, cluster manager and I'm going to go ahead and uh, click uh, new cluster and I'm going to actually point it to the first node in that cluster. So dev sf0. And uh, once uh, you press enter or hit connect, it will show you the actual interface that's available on that server and the IP address that's available on the server as well. So another real quick thing I just want to show you as well, in the server manager, um, if you want to actually take a look at what's happening, um, you can go ahead and uh, find the the nodes that we're going to be installing this on. And we'll just add them here because uh, this, this view right here actually shows us what the IP addresses are available. What you'll notice is uh, these nodes here only have their individual IPs. Once we actually get the um, NLB feature installed and the cluster created, you'll notice that the additional IPs are going to start showing up. So let's uh, let's actually go ahead and start setting this up. The first uh, thing I'm, I'm going to show you is uh, the fact that you want to set the priority. I'm going to go ahead and set priority to uh, 10 on this particular node, and I'll keep going down. Um, this is actually used in NLB for deciding on which node is going to get the request, uh, depending on load and priority that is being uh, configured. So since um, uh, higher uh, priorities actually get preference, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with 10. This way I have some way, um, I have some leeway in terms of in the future if I want to change that by adding another node having a higher priority, I can do that. So starting with 10 I think makes sense. So everything else I'm going to keep the same and I'm going to go ahead and hit next here and here is where we're going to define the cluster IP. So in this particular case for our DNS record we actually used uh, .230 so I'm going to set this up right here as well. And the net mask is uh, 255.255.255.0. Go ahead and hit OK and then next. And then here is where you give it the actual name of the cluster and that's the record that you want to create as well. Um, and then we're also going to specify multicast. Basically what this is doing is um, defining how the cluster is going to actually uh, communicate with all the other nodes um, to, to know, you know that they're operational or if they need to be configured. So uh, multicast basically sends a broadcast out uh, to all the nodes uh, to establish communication. So I'll hit next. And here's where you actually define which ports that we want uh, to be able to actually 
uh, load balance through this uh, configuration. So in this case, since this is a service fabric cluster, there's three particular ports that I'm interested in, which is uh, port uh, 19,000, which is used for my deployments uh, from Visual Studio, uh, 19080, uh, which is actually the service fabric explorer, uh, which is the browser interface we uh, constantly open up to see everything in the cluster. And then uh, 19081, which is our application gateway proxy uh, port itself. So let's go ahead and configure that here. And uh, I'm specifying protocols as both uh, UDP and TCP. Um, it's going to be a multi uh, host uh, filtering mode. So basically, all the hosts are going to be available, not just a uh, single host. And then affinity is basically. Um, something that allows you to for example none if you specify none as affinity it will continuously round robin between the nodes which is what i'm going to be choosing here in terms of single it's basically going to point you to one node and uh once you establish a session to that one node you're going to be constantly taken to that and um, i don't actually remember what network stands for but um, from what i remember it's not very often used so I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, choose a, uh, affinity of none for all of these port configurations. And I'll go ahead and uh, click finish. And what this is going to do is actually going to go ahead and uh, deploy that configuration, deploy that cluster, and uh, what you can actually do here as well is uh, we should be able to actually ping our uh, record now. So if I do that, and as you can see, it actually started responding. Now, you also notice that if I refresh this view right here, I should actually start seeing that additional IP address right here. So it's showing up, and uh, we should be able to start uh, adding additional nodes to this cluster. So um, I'll just go ahead and do this real quick. Now, uh, there's actually a set of PowerShell commands that you can use for this as well, um, which I'm not using here today. But uh, if you're doing this quite often, uh, you might want to actually learn how to use PowerShell for this, as it would make it a lot easier. And one more uh, node to go, and we should be ready to start testing. So I'll go ahead and actually refresh, and you'll see that um, all of these nodes are actually uh, converging, which may basically means that they're gathering information about each node to make sure that all the traffic is being routed properly. And uh, this UI also uh, doesn't refresh very nicely. So in this case, you can see that uh, it said it's converged, but the other nodes didn't refresh. But if I refresh in here, you'll see that they actually all came up uh, correctly now. So if I go ahead and uh, minimize this, refresh this view, you should see that um, all the nodes actually had the IP address configured on them as well. So um, if one of these nodes actually goes down, the actual NLB cluster itself, we know will know that a particular node is down and it will not redirect the traffic to that particular node. So uh, if I go back and open up my browser now, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change my uh, URL in the browser to point to devsf instead of actually pointing to a particular node, since now the NLB is actually uh, load balancing the service fabric nodes themselves. So uh, that's one thing. And the other thing is I can now also specify um, just devsf in here as well. And if I navigate to this, you can see that the functionality basically remains the same. And as I keep refreshing, we now have two levels of load balancing. One, we have load balancing at the Windows layer, which is basically the NLB itself that we just set up. And the other one is the actual application uh, gateway uh, that's actually load balancing. So one of the cool things about this is that now uh, if I actually go ahead and trigger uh, an update command to my application, so let's actually try that here. 
as long as the upgrade process doesn't end up hanging one of the nodes, which is uh, something that I've observed in the past uh, from Service Fabric, um, everything should actually be pretty seamless to the end user. So let's go ahead and publish this. And as it uh, starts publishing, we'll see the output here. And as it's going and doing its thing, uh, I'm going to open this window right here and actually start refreshing this window. Or if I start just navigating to my application, you can see that um, everything is actually working without any issues. The application has begun the upgrade process. So actually, let me bring this window out here. So I can actually uh, show you the fact that we actually have an upgrade in process as I'm actually uh, refreshing the application itself. So you can see that some of the nodes are actually going down. But um, but the application is actually responsive and there's no issues here. Now you will notice uh, the behavior of um, loading actually slowing down sometimes um, and that is because as the application actually starts getting deployed to your nodes um, the .NET uh, runtime actually needs to reinitialize and restart so that is normal behavior of a .NET application however you're noticing that we're not getting any uh, error messages stating that our application is not accessible so depending on how you write your application, whether you use web APIs and you just update your web API layer, uh, this transition or this upgrade to your application will be completely seamless to your end users, which is uh, a really, really nice thing to have because now you can actually uh, do production-based upgrades without worrying about impacting your users. You do have to uh, consider the fact that uh, if you're using sessions, um, and you're storing session information out, you know, basically not uh, not inside of like a SQL database or some other external store, but inside of each individual application instance node, then you might have end users that lose their session information. But uh, if you actually design your application properly with a session state being uh, persisted outside uh, of your application itself and just reload it uh, as users hit different nodes, then you will not see this problem, uh, you know, with users losing session. So in uh, future videos, I actually do want to start looking at how to leverage Service Fabric a little bit more in terms of actually even storing session state information inside of a, a, a highly available service uh, inside of Service Fabric. So. As you can see, actually, the upgrade of the application completed, and not once have we actually lost connectivity to our application. So th this is the benefit of NLB. Now, um, NLB is something that actually runs within Windows itself and actually does uh, take up some processing power. So um, it might not uh, be a, a, a very robust uh, enterprise scale load balancing solution. Um, you, you could use an external appliance. Uh, for that purpose, but for smaller size applications, this is absolutely you know, perfect uh, use case for that, where um, you might not have you know hundreds or thousands and thousands of users. You might have you know a few hundred users that are constantly using this application, and, and I think this is a great way of enabling uh, high availability for that scenario. And then um, Microsoft also has uh, a new feature in Windows 2016, which is uh, Network Controller that comes with software load balancing, which is something that uh, I am beginning to look into right now. Um, and in the future videos, I plan to actually uh, provide some content in terms of how to consume that uh, software load balancing. But it, it's going to be a series of videos uh, because it's a complicated uh, setup, but can be extremely robust. So hopefully this video was useful. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead, uh, go ahead and leave your comments in the comment section below. And um, I'll try to respond as quickly as I can, and I will talk to you next time.